the new civil 3D endeavor tech Ida's automated way of designing roads and intersections. So you guys know the struggle, which I just did manually. It was tedious, it was problematic. So I'm on the edge of my seat because I also want you guys to know, don't blink too fast because you might miss something. Here we go. So this time we're working on the same principles and the same amount of data. So what we are currently doing, let me just start this thing, there we go. So what I wanna do is we still got the surface, we as, as well as got the same profiles. I just gave this file a new name, it's just called Iron Man now. And we've got still the same reason. Now I'm gonna be a little bit of a bit cocky if I have to say it myself, but I'm gonna design four roads instead of just two. And I'm gonna do one intersection design. So here we go. If I'm using IDAS tool command, we've got a corridor wizard. So we can simply select a corridor wizard and that's it. All I need to do, do is define a polyline. So I'm going to select this polyline, road one, road two. And like I said, I'm going to even show off a little bit. I'm going to do two additional ones. So here we go. I specify that. Then I need to go set up the name convention and some of the styles. So you can also go add the sample lines if you want to. It does this as well as the the profile designs, I can specify the ETWs, it will create it automatically. The default assemblies, I can go and set up. The lane width, I can specify for all of the rows to 3.7. I set up the profile views and the band settings. And the information inside of that band settings, it will do it automatically for me. I just need to specify these three elements, which is the left, right, center, and the surface. That's the one of the requirements. And it will even go create the surfaces for the top surfaces of those roads. So I can specify the style and even the datum surface. Isn't that awesome? So as soon as I say next, I can go even do the super elevation design. So I can specify if I want the slope road with NGL or against NGL, depending on which one you want. And it will do it for you. As well as I can say apply design criteria for all of them. Remember, I need to do each and every one of them as I go along. Now this setting does everything. So I simply say create. I specify when I'm going to put the profile views and Bob's your uncle, it's there. Done. I know, it's, it's insane. So you can still do modifications to this. You can actually go and define the levels as it is. And now I'm interested in the intersection design. So you're saying, okay, Jacques, that's really impressive. But what about the intersection design? So first things first, we need to go specify the bow mouse so I can get the radius. Now something to note, what I always tell my students and my clients, we always need to make sure our corridors are rebuilt. So inside of DevTech IDAS, we have a rebuild automatic function that will assist us and making sure these things are also always rebuilt automatic. So I can just say rebuild corridors and select all of them and they will be rebuilt. So that's a very nice function instead of going one by one. So if I want to do the intersection design, the first thing I need to do is for the bow mouse. So if I go select for the alignment, so I select the first alignment, second alignment, and I specify the radius of the bow mouse, so I specify 10. As soon as I do that, it adds this two polylines because that is required inside the intersection wizard. So if I go to the T intersection wizard, because I have a T intersection in here, I specify the intersection point, and as I do that, it's gonna ask me for some few settings inside, as well as it will change the intersection part for me automatically if I specify that uh, assembly. And I can go define for row two, just make sure those are correct. And now it's gonna ask me to select the left bow mouth. So I'm gonna select the polyline we just created and it signs its assembly, as well as the right hand side, we do that one. And simply say next. I don't have medians, but if I did, I can actually go and do those developments. The frequencies, remember I need to go into one of them. Now I can do all of them in the same go. And then I can go set up all of the styles, like for example, the profile view, and I can say create intersection. So as soon as I do that, it's gonna ask me to select a location where to place those two profiles, which I needed to do manually. So as soon as I do that, it will create them. And then all I need to do is rebuild everything. So if I say rebuild corridor and Bob's your uncle, we're done. So I'm gonna stop the clock. It took me 3.49 minutes just to do the same amount of effort I did with the previous session. So what has actually been brought in? So let's go a little bit in depth. If I go to the corridor itself, 
And let's go to object viewer so you can see that I'm not bluffing. He actually did design this entire intersection perfectly. So as you can see, it generated all of those elements. So let's go into a 3D dynamic a little bit and check that out. Just like that. It's beautiful, simply beautiful. So what else has been brought in? So because you guys saw the tedious work I needed to do manually, if I go to the corridor properties, you see it already adds the bound off to the left, it adds the frequencies as well as the target. So it reduces the amount of errors you're doing inside of your company and especially for your civil project. As well as it even went as creating the profile views and attaching the right data to it. You can still go and modify it. Say for example, if you change, let's say one of the profile designs. So if I do want to do modifications to this, you can. Say for example, it does add this just a PVI, but if I want to add a curve to it, Let's say we go to edit profile geometry and I want to add a more free vertical curve. And let's add this one and specify a radius. I think 50 is gonna to be too much. Let me just rather say 20. And there we go. Now all I need to do is I need to rebuild and watch what happens as soon as I rebuild. The ETWs also update. So they are dynamic. So you do this once and you don't have to worry about the ETWs. He even actually went into connecting to the existing road. So there's a nice little tool inside of DevoTech IDAS. If I go to profiles, I can actually go and project multiple surfaces, ah, yeah, multiple surfaces to specific profiles. So if I say add a surface, I can simply go and select road one top, and I can go select for all of the profiles I want to project this. The old fashioned way is we need to do it one by one manually. Now with this little tool, it helps us do it all together. So if I simply say, okay, and yes. And as you can see, if I switch on my line weight, there we go, it actually has added. That's topographic surface of row one. The last thing I also wanna show is for the profile views. If I go to the profile views itself, just to show to you, it actually puts up the right profiles directly. There's no more doing this manually, you actually have the ability to actually save these imports and export using one of the DevTech IDAS tools commands as well. You can also do that. And lastly, what I wanna show you is the corridor properties. If I go to surfaces, it actually creates all of those surfaces directly, as well as putting up the boundaries for the rest of the parts, which we need to do every time manually. So it saves you a lot of time when it comes to development and time saving. So ladies and gentlemen, that was very interesting. So Captain America does have its own opinion. So what is the war report and part statistics of what we've just achieved? So let's deep dive into this. So when using the Captain America way, aka the civil 3D alone. So just a quick summary. It took 25.48 minutes to complete two roads and half of the intersection. As well as we are, have a little bit of limitations to this, the edge of the tarway has to be recreated additionally if adjustments were made to the road. And we need to always set this up in our profile bands, which takes a lot of time, especially if you've got very big urban development roads. You could imagine if I have to do 15 roads, it, it saves you a lot of time. Then very critical for civil projects, um, time and pro productivity for overall completion of civil projects are affected because time equals money and doing it the old fashioned way, it takes a bit more strain on clients. Then the Iron Man, AKA Civil 3D and Devotech IDAS. I did actually four designs of roads and an intersection in less than 3.49 minutes to complete. The ETWs is dynamically updated if any adjustments are made to the road design, as well as the data bands data are already set up correctly from the start. Then the time and precision, it has been increased by 86%. So you could imagine how, how big of an effort that goes into your project. So meaning I can do more civil projects and complete it in less time. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, I do have to mention, I just briefly touched a little part on Devotech IDAS plus Civil 3D. So there are elements I did not discuss, but there are still a lot of value that we can show you in regards to this element. But that's where we still have got the second part webinar on next week, Friday. So, but the overall statistic, the battle results for this competition, I have to give it to Civil 3D Endeavor Tech Iras wins. Sorry, Mr. Captain America, maybe next time.